Good morning to all. As a part of National Nutrition Week Celebrations 2021, which is jointly organized by the Department of Home Science, EHSB Center, the College for Women Autonomous, Teluru, and ICAR, Indian Institute of Oil Palm Research, Pedavegi, Andhra Pradesh. We are happy to associate with you. The right nutrition is the most important factor that determines the well-being of the person. Undoubtedly, it will help any individual to achieve good health necessary for growth and development. Hence, in order to make the common people aware of the importance of nutrition, we celebrate the National Nutrition Week every year, starting from September 1st to 7th. And uh, in a country like India, where millions of people are still uh, suffering from malnutrition, there is a need to create consciousness and uh, awareness on the necessary nutrients that are uh, useful for the uh, development of the individual. So as a part of this, first and for as a baby step, we wanted to start to collaborate with other research institutions and NGOs so that we can create awareness. Yes, this is a small step, but we uh, look forward to uh, that in the coming years, it will be a big step and the future India will be a healthy India. Uh, and zero hunger will be achieved. So for every program to be a successful one, we start with the prayer. Now I invite Divya of Sec 3rd BSC Home Science to lead us into prayer. Bible reading is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 23, verses 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He, roaster, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare me a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You earn my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God. Thanks be to God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, Divya, for invoking God's blessings. As a part of this National Nutrition Week, I extend a warm welcome to all who are present here. And a fine morning extended from the Dep Department of Home Science to all the de delegates and all the dignitaries present here and also to uh, the students and the other fraternity who have joined on the YouTube. I extend a warm welcome to our principal, Dr. Sister Marietta Dimello, our correspondent, Dr. Sister Marietta Pudota, vice principal, Dr. Sister Shauri Lu, controller of exams, Dr. Sanula Rani, Dr. R.K. Mathur, director of IIOPR, and other scientist staff who are present here. And a very fruitful and healthy welcome is extended to our resource person, Dr. R. Venkateswarlu, scientist in biochemistry from ICR Institute of Millet Research, Indian Institute of Millet Research from Hyderabad. Welcome you, sir. After this short welcome, I would like to just say a word about the Nutrition Week. One of the major purpose of observing this important day is to raise an awareness among the people to bring a change. However small it can be, but it is to educate the people about the need of the right nutrients for the growth and development. Apart from delivering nutrition literacy to the common people, the celebration of National Nutrition Week aims to promote nutritionists and their profession. In India, Nutrition Week celebrations have started from 1982, from 1st September to 7th September. And during this entire week, efforts are made by the government and related people to raise and spread awareness about the right nutrition. To be exact, on a healthy body, 
creates a healthy mind so every human who is healthy can be a better citizen therefore it is essential and important to educate the people about the importance of nutrition now i invite before uh, inviting i would like to share the theme of this year that is feed smart right from the start so uh, just a saying by uh, la roche for call to eat is a necessity but to eat intelligent is an art so uh, in this regard we requested a scientist dr b uh, dr r venkateswarlu from indian institute of military research hyderabad so i would request ms banu prasanna from the department of home science to introduce us sir morning one and all so i ps banu prasanna lecturer in home science would like to welcome dr r venkateswarlu scientist icar institute of indian institute of millet research so so it's i'm very happy to introduce sir so sir dr r venkateswarlu sir he has worked as scientist icar central institute of fisheries technology kochi from 2000 august 2009 to may 2015 and present he is working as scientist icar indian institute of millet research hyderabad from may 2015 to date so he has completed bbsc that is veterinary science at madras veterinary college tanuvas in 2005 and he has completed his mbsc animal biochemistry at icar national dairy research institute 2007 and he has awarded with phd degree in the field of animal biochemistry at icar indian veterinary research institute at in 2013 he was awarded as best trainee award he was uh, at 86 focards of naarm and he has guided two students for research work as part of their msc degree program he has developed fresh water fish wafers enriched with soy flour and sardine oil for improving protein and puf content he is a member nabl self implementation of nabl at icar icft kochi and he is a team member in technology transfer of chitin and chitosan to industry thank you thank you vanand thank you vanand prasanna for introducing the resource person sir now i request you to take over the uh, and uh, i'll stop sharing sir sharing sir you can continue Shall I share the, share the presentation, madam? Yes, sir. You can share, sir. Can you see the presentation, madam? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you uh, banu prasanna for the nice introduction and uh, at the outset i would like to thank uh, dr padmaja and uh, saint theresa's college for women for giving me this opportunity and the indian institute of oil palm research pedavegi also for organizing this uh, small talk uh, pedavegi reminds me of my childhood days uh, when i was playing uh, cluster games at uh, jawahar navodaya vidyalaya pedavegi i'm not sure whether it is close to the institute so thank you for the opportunity so today's brief talk is on uh, importance of millets in indian diets please make it full screen is is it not full screen sir no uh, no sir okay. it is in normal view on oh, my laptop it is in full screen just one second
Okay, otherwise carry on. Uh, one second, sir. I'll try doing that again. Is it appearing, sir? No, sir. Sir, okay. otherwise you upload it to Google Slides and Drive, and then it is it will show it as a full screen, sir. Uh, otherwise, I will increase the size, ma'am. Ah, uh, okay, sir. Yeah. I'll just reduce this. Okay. Is it okay, ma'am? Now? Yes, sir. It is okay, sir. Yeah. Sir, uh, actually, it is in the no uh, normal view, sir. If you click this uh, slide to show okay. mode, presentation mode, it will uh, be visible in the full screen. This uh, on on your screen, ninety percent is there, no? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, left to that, the cup is there. You click that. Yeah, I have clicked that, sir. But uh, uh, oh, that's okay. It's still in normal mode, sir. Uh, no, cup is not clicked. Oh, one second, sir. I think. Take oh, just, there. Yeah, yes, sir. Just I will do one thing. Uh, I'll just unshare it. I'll first make it. Uh, Sir, if in sharing also, if you click full screen, then it will show the full screen, sir. One second, ma'am. This mm -hmm. Google Meet is, uh, yeah, I'll just. Uh, yeah. Any, uh, I just shared, ma'am, is it appearing full? It's fine, ma'am. Now, ah, yes, sir. Okay, uh, sorry for the interruption. Uh, we are used to Zoom meetings, which is a bit more uh, easy for us. Anyway, so I'm going to now present on importance of millets in Indian diets. So even uh, before we knew about nutrition, our ancestors have been consuming food, and they they have been living and evolved for quite millennia of years without knowing that what the food is containing. So it is not new to us, but only now that we are realizing what are the chemical constituents in the food we are consuming and how it is actually influencing our health. Of course, uh, during throughout the human evolution, they have suffered from diseases, both infectious diseases, deficiency diseases, all plagues, everything. So with a better understanding of health, we are able to better preserve it because everyone is endowed with a genetic uh, composition which indirectly determines our health. But our duty is to preserve that uh, uh, gift at birth so that we can have better and productive lifestyles. So health is defined as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely absence of disease or infirmity. So this was a very old definition by who? 1948, which withstood the tests of time to define overall health of a person. So it is not only the physical body in normal function, but also sound thinking and doing ability, along with ability to cooperate with our uh, fellow human beings and to interact with them in a healthful manner. So all this constitutes health. And the type of diet we are consuming, the total food we consume is called the diet what we are calling. Sometimes it is like uh, they say you are on diet, means everybody will be eating diet only. But uh, the definitions have been slowly changing because of our uh, colloquial interactions. So diet includes the food we are consuming. So I briefly explain about how our bodies work. So it is like a, we can consider human body as an extraordinary machine. Because if you look at any mechanical machines, they might break down in 10 years, 20 years, maximum maybe 30 years. But human bodies can work very well up to around 60 years average lifespan, which is really an extraordinary ability, ability to repair themselves so that they are at their optimal function. So these extraordinary machines are complex because from outside it looks very simple, but inside it is very complex. And it is having different parts integrated with one another 
and is also self repairing and is also adaptive it adapts very nicely for different types of activities given to it suppose if you want to wake up in the morning at 5 o'clock if you wake up for 10 days or 20 days the next day you will wake up at the same time automatically without even thinking so our bodies can adapt very well but slowly drastic changes cannot be tolerated by the body and the body will always try to be in a homeostatic environment that means it will try to maintain itself in a state of balance even though external inputs are not there suppose if you are not eating for one day two days or five days there will be certain metabolic adaptations in the body but it will not completely break down so that is called maintaining the homeostasis so whatever the food and water we take will be used for one thing for growth in in case of children and growing adults and for work in case of those who are doing normal activities so on the remaining part which is not digested and absorbed by the body are excreted to waste so what our food contains initial days we do not know but as we developed interest due to deficiency diseases we came to know that the main ingredients in the food materials we consume can be divided into macronutrients and micronutrients so the macronutrients are carbohydrates protein fat and the micronutrients are vitamins minerals and phytochemicals so the carbohydrates that is starch in our food is mainly used for energy the proteins are mainly used for building the tissues and the fats are used for energy storage so these are the main ingredients which our bodies are also made up of of course there are slight differences between plants and animals however to carry out these metabolic reactions that means for producing the energy from carbohydrates we require vitamins and minerals however the quantities required are very small the vitamins and mineral requirement is very very little if you imagine that is so small you think it is not necessary itself suppose uh, folate the folic acid requirement for body is hardly in micrograms by micrograms which is so small but is having a very important role in metabolism so the vitamins are mainly used as coenzymes by the enzymes of the body and minerals are the cofactors so which help in catalyzing the biochemical reactions apart from this the body also require antioxidants to prevent itself from undergoing any oxidative changes so our main constituents are cereals or our main uh, food materials are rice wheat millets and maize pulses are beans and grains and animal products eggs meat and milk and fruits and vegetables so this covers the broad variety of uh, products that indians generally consume so why do the foods differ in composition because the food material itself is a living uh, material living tissue so it is coming from plants so in the plant a leaf is having a specific function stem is having a specific function similarly grains are having a specific function so the grains are the germ and the endosperm which are used were used as the base material for next generation so that tissue is having a specific composition similarly leaf is having a different composition because it is the photosynthetic part so the composition of both of these definitely differ depending on their function so if we broadly take the cereals their main uh, portion is carbohydrates around 65 to 70% pulses are rich in protein 21 to 25% and oil seeds are rich in fat that is 20 to 40% so if you look at the micronutrients their portion is hardly 2% that is vitamins and minerals in the food material whatever we are generally consuming but the macronutrients are 98% of them are macronutrients which are present in the food coming to the indian diets so indian diets are generally vegetarian diets so in vegetarian diets uh, the main ingredients that are consumed are different from major non vegetarian diet in non showing slides ah oh, yes sir no we are not getting uh, they are not uh, changing sir changing no, no sir no, it's not oh, changing sorry actually uh, i am seeing in my screen they are changing but uh, yeah now now started yeah. Okay, okay. Guidelines for Indians has come, annual has come. Yeah. Now, serious policy. Oh, fine, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry for the interruption. Actually, I'm seeing, seeing in the full screen. I think it is in the normal screen. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. 
so the dietary guidelines for indians so th there is a small manual by nim dietary guidelines for indians which uh, gives in detail very practical points about how to choose uh, our food material for creating a balanced diet so i think uh, i feel everybody should read these guidelines these are, these are very crisp without much verbosity and to the point so that practically we can uh, create a better diet so the food types what are all the food types and the intake and the rda uh, in the food types cereals and millets this is the indian consumption uh, survey from the nnmb 20000 2006 it says that our cereal consumption is around 345 g while the requirement is around 400 g pulses if you look at it is almost three times less so it is 24 g is our consumption while the recommended is 80 g per day so milk even vegetables and oils also we are consuming less that means uh, overall our intake is less we are not taking adequate amount of nutrients first thing second is our diet is major majorly cereal based and it is also less diverse because different ingredients are not getting into the plate and then the quality of protein is also less when it is not diversified diet so this is the uh, uh, actual overall indian average uh, diet consumption so these are the guidelines which are given by nin for uh, uh, a healthy human being so in this if you see the main points are we should eat a variety of diets so to make the diet balanced and also we should ensure extra food and healthcare to pregnant and lactating women because they are in requirement of more nutrition to support the nutrition of the baby also many times due to uh, superstition or preconceived notions at families or homes many pregnant women are devoid of sufficient nutrition telling that they should not eat this type of diet they should not eat that type of diet so that actually is having a effect on the child uh, infant and the developing baby's nutrition so th uh, third is to promote exclusive breastfeeding for 6 months and till 2 years if possible then feed home based semi solid foods to infants after 6 months ensure adequate and appropriate diets for children and adolescents both in health and sickness and also eat plenty of vegetables and fruits and moderate use of edible oils and minimal use of saturated fats like panaspati avoid overeating to prevent overweight and obesity this is actually a very uh, difficult and controversial part many people who are overweight although they want to reduce their weight and they know that it is important to reduce food consumption it is not that easy to restrain the diet consumption because the hunger is driven by the mind the many hormones and its functions in the brain will drive people to eat more it is not so easy to control the drive that is why it is not just mere uh, the inability to uh, eat less but also that there is some metabolic change within the body which is actually driving the eating and exercise regularly and physically keep yourself active to maintain an ideal body weight and restrict salt intake to minimum and ensure use of safe and clean foods adopt right pre cooking and processes to make the food more uh, tasty drink plenty of water and take beverages in moderation and minimize use of processed foods rich in salt sugar and fats so where do our millets uh, uh, play a role in this so we are already consuming diets our diets are mainly cereal based diets those who are able to afford the diet they are able to diversify the diet and also are able to achieve most of the nutritional goals however when when we come to the millets so millets are actually a small seeded cereal grains we have to consider them as cereals because they are grass family based so we have sorghum pearl millet finger millet fox tail little millet barnyard millet kodo millet proso millet ponio teff and other millets are there so uh, actually the eight millets we call it as the major millets for us so of these sorghum pearl millet and finger millet can be consumed as such that means the grain is uh, uh, whole grain and we can consume it without uh, any further processing 
that means in the sense uh, we can make it into a flower and you can use in the preparation of products the other millets like flock tail little barnyard cordo millet and proso millet little millet require dehulling like rice that means we cannot consume the millet as such so when we are removing the husk we should be cautious that we should not be over polishing the millets that is one aspect and then traditionally sorghum and pearl millet is also cooked as rice even in my childhood i have taken pearl millet and sorghum as rice but the preparation is first we have to soak it and then pound it to remove the upper seed coat layer because the seed coat layer is so tough when the grain is cooked as such the grain will look like a round ball there it won't be splitting so it will be very difficult to consume it so to make it amenable or to cook it as rice we have to remove the outer layer and then be cooked as a normal rice and can be eaten which was very, uh, a staple food maybe for my forefathers generation so this is the composition of uh, millets if you briefly look at the composition you will find that generally millets are better in amount of protein compared to rice rice of course on par with wheat also and fat like all cereals millets are also less in fat however pearl millet is having slightly higher amount of fat like around 5 to 7% so because of this higher amount of fat when pearl millet is made into flour for preparing roti or bakri it cannot be stored more than a week sometimes it gets spoiled within 3 uh, to 5 days itself it it develops a slight rancidity and also bitterness which makes our uh, senses offensive so that is a fat content in the millets and the carbohydrates anyway is sufficient quantities are there and generally they are very high in quantity and dietary fiber this is an important aspect if you look at rice the dietary fiber content of rice is only 2.8 sometimes it goes down to 0.5 also depending on how it is polished however most of the millets are having high amount of dietary fiber but i would like to remind you that if other uh, millets with husk are going to be processed too much then the dietary fiber will also be lost similarly iron and other minerals and vitamins so iron in case of rice is so less it is hardly 6 ppm that is 0.6 mg per 100 grams of the rice you eat and in calcium generally our diets contain sufficient calcium however when there is a higher calcium requirement the uh, quantities present in our diets are not sufficient if you look at the da calcium data here finger millet is having very high calcium content compared to any of the grains it is almost 364 mg of calcium in 100 grams of flour so this much amount of calcium will be very good for growing children pregnant women and also for those who are taking dietary supplements of calcium especially in men menopause and if you consider the thiamine riboflavin and other important vitamins so these are all water soluble vitamins what are listed here because uh, plant diets are generally poor in uh, fat soluble vitamins so in case of thiamine if you take the rice which is market sample it is very less thiamine content however our millets are having in general very good amount of thiamine riboflavin and niacin also and folate is also in sufficient quantities in millets so using this background of nutrient content i will try to explain where millets can play a role depending on the uh, our history of nutritional diseases so this is the normal dietary requirement for humans so the protein requirement is around 60 g per day so this calculation is like uh, suppose uh, if a person of 60 kg he requires around 1 g of protein per his 1 kg of body weight so if a 50 kg person requires 50 g 100 kg person requires 100 g of protein so there is an essential requirement for protein if we stop taking protein our body will break down our protein itself to use it for other functions then there is no restriction on amount of fat however we should not consume more than a certain amount here it is around 30 g per day so when we consume uh, fat 
we have to ensure that it is more of unsaturated type because saturated fats tend to increase cholesterol content in blood and leading to cardiovascular diseases. So we need to restrict our fat consumption, but we cannot completely avoid because certain fatty acids are essential. Similarly, if you look at the calcium requirement, it is around 600 mg per day in case of men and around 1200 mg per day in case of pregnant women. However, if you look at the diet, suppose if your diet is having 20 mg of calcium, that is 200 ppm, so we have to consume almost around 10 times of that. Suppose if you consume 1 kg of that, you will get 200 mg of calcium. If That means in a sole diet calculations. So if you want to meet your calcium requirements, we should first have a diets which are rich in calcium also like milk, uh, vegetables and also green leafy vegetables. If possible, a cereal based diet with ragi or finger millet. And in case of iron, the requirement is around 17 mg per day. And for women, it is 21 mg per day. So to meet these requirements, we have to formulate our diet in such a way that not only it contains the nutrient, but it is also absorbed into the body. And we should try to meet the total calorie requirement of 2700 kilocalories per day in case of men and 2200 kilocalories per day in case of women. Because unless there is sufficient energy, all other metabolic processes also which are requiring energy can proceed further. So it is both uh, protein and energy which are the essential requirements along with vitamins and minerals. If you see any literature in uh, nutrition, you won't find that uh, uh, there is an essential requirement for carbohydrate per se. They won't say you should eat this much carbohydrate. However, because foods definitely contain carbohydrate and we also require glucose, which is essential for brain function, certain amount of carbohydrate is essential in the diet, but there is no strict uh, restriction on this much carbohydrate. But however, we have to meet, uh, meet our total amount of uh, uh, calorie required for the body. So as I initially explained, the different parts of cereal or millets uh, contain a different nutrient composition because based on their function. So if you look at the grain structure per se, the endosperm portion is rich in carbohydrates, while the germ portion is rich in proteins and minerals. So in case of rice, if you look at the rice, how it is being processed after dehulling, which we call it as brown rice, it is further processed to remove upper layers. That is a bran or aluron layer. When that layer is removed, it removes both minerals and also vitamins present in that. Along with that, the germ portion that is attached to the endosperm is also lost. If you look at the rice grain, there will be a small notch in one end. That was the portion where the germ portion is attaching and that is lost during the processing. So removal of this aluron and bran layer extensively is the main problem with the rice. Per se rice, we cannot say it is, it, it is bad. However, the way it is processed is actually creating difficulties in achieving the nutritional goals. If you look at the histor historical nutritional deficiencies, that means uh, what are the uh, diseases that actually appear due to nutrition deficiencies. So we can call them as a, a marasmus and kwashiorkor due to protein energy malnutrition, then thiamine deficiency, that is vitamin deficiency, which is called as beriberi or kake in Japanese, then pellagra, niacin or tryptophan deficiency, and scurvy due to vitamin C deficiency. So these are the main vitamin deficiencies that appeared as epidemic promotions. That means like a like a pandemic type where those people who are consuming that diet all have got affected with that. Lacks, lacks of people suffering with the disease. And other sporadic cases are reported for vitamin A, iron and zinc, calcium and folate deficiencies. Although these have not appeared as epidemics, but still based on the diet types, these deficiencies do occur. So if you look at the deficiencies of thiamine, it was first reported from Japanese Navy, long sea duty and lack of fresh foods and polished rice. 
cured by addition of barley to rice rations if you look at it uh, when the rice is mixed with barley which is less processed that is preventing the uh, beriberi disease so that means a little portion of barley which is having the vitamins is sufficient to prevent the disease in the population and deficient factor of thiamine was identified through chicken experiments and then uh, in case of diversified diets this beriberi was never reported then in recent months it is being reported in case of young infants so after birth when the uh, children i mean infants are breastfed for 6 months they receive most of their nutrients from the milk so in such cases when the mother's diet is lacking in sufficient diversity enough thiamine is not secreted into the milk when enough thiamine is not there in the milk within 2 months after birth the children are developing the deficiency so these are these deficiency is uh, they are causing uh, heart dysfunction and also inability to consume food with different manifestations generally if the physician fails to diagnose this condition immediately then it is a fatal condition however if the physician is able to diagnose it in time and a thiamine injection is given to the infant within 24 hours the infant recovers from the disease so uh, uh, that is the importance of thiamine in case of normal metabolism so these deficiencies are appearing now and then because of monotonous diets in the people however if you look at our millets both sorghum pearl millet and finger millet are consumed as whole grains so we are not processing them much so whatever the nutrients that are present in the aluron layer are present in the uh, flour and we are able to consume them along with that similarly the dehulled millets if they are partially pro- polished not extensively polished then the nutrients are available from them and then we can consume them in our diet so a cereal and millet can be combined with each other so that we will not develop any deficiencies similarly for pellagra if you look at the history of uh, corn consumption maize consumption it was extensively consumed in uh, 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 mexican civilizations and in america however they have not suffered from pellagra immediately but they started developing this disease because a new processing equipment was introduced which was very efficiently removing the germ portion and the aluron portion from the maize grain so once this uh, highly efficient uh, uh, machine started appearing in the market the people started processing the grain very extensively leading to preparation of uh, what you call uh, refined flours so refined flours when used for preparing the food the people started developing Uh, niacin and tryptophan deficiency because maize is already deficient in niacin and tryptophan by processing we are even removing the nutrients which are present in minor quantities also so uh, we should be very careful when we when we try to use a certain food type for mass consumption when the diet diversity is lacking so we might be wondering why why to polish grains so much because if you look at rice it appears so white as if it is like sugar so to improve the appearance we are one thing polishing the grain and also it reduces slight bran taste from that and the most important thing is it also enhances the shelf life of the product because once the rice is polished very well we can store it for quite long time in the form of rice itself because there is no bran layer very less fat in the bran layer so due to less fat it undergoes less rancidity and can be stored for very long time not only that we can transport it from one continent to other continent so because of these advantages we tend to polish the grains so much which is actually reducing the nutrient content recently with the avail of availability of technology for making oil like rice bran oil it is becoming even incentive for the millers to extensively polish the rice so that the bran is also having a uh, good market value now coming to the importance of minerals so these are the the initial ones are the vitamins which are required in very small quantities and required in our metabolism coming to our minerals though so these are inorganic ions so they are absorbed by the plant as such from the soil and incorporated into the grain for its normal function 
so when we are consuming it in our diet so our body also absorbs the minerals these minerals are actually cofactors for many of these enzymes involved in the normal metabolism like iron for catalase nitrogenase and cytochromes in mitochondria then copper for uh, cytochrome oxidase then magnesium for uh, dna polymerase and exokinase like that there are a bunch of metals which are involved in the normal metabolic function however we do not develop most of the mineral deficiencies because the plants also are having similar enzymes and they do require the metals so when we consume we we get them most of the time however our physiological requirements are slightly different from plants especially in case of metals like iron and calcium so there are no bones in plants so they don't store so much of calcium and also there is no transport system like uh, blood circulation in case of plants to use hemoglobin so but iron is required for hemoglobin myoglobin and other functions in the body so the most common mineral deficiency in india and many parts of the world is iron deficiency which is the cause of anemia so anemia develops over a period of time generally the body will have reserves in in liver and also in the form of ferritin so it stores the iron to some extent and as and when it is required it is released into the circulation and supplied to the tissues but if the diet is completely lacking in for a prolonged period of time then we tend to develop these deficiencies so anemia develops generally in children whose requirement goes on increasing as they grow and also in women who are pregnant and also lactating and around 1.45 billion people are affected throughout the world with an estimated 54000 deaths due to nutritional anemia in case of uh, especially mothers especially during the pregnancy period and trimesters where the uh, blood uh, becomes thinner more uh, increase in volume to compensate for providing oxygen to the infant in those conditions it is important that the blood contain sufficient oxygen to supply and also in case of any emergencies of bleeding it should support the oxygen supply to the tissues so why we become generally deficient in case of iron is that uh, the physiological demand in case of uh, uh, women is one aspect and also any bleeding or surgeries which cause large amount of blood loss will also require more amount of iron requirement but there is one problem with iron absorption in the body usually the bioavailability what we call that is uh, suppose if we are consuming 100 mg of iron in the diet we can absorb hardly 5 to 10 mg into the body so that is the limit 5 to 10% of the dietary iron is only absorbed so in that case suppose if our rice is having 5 ppm iron that is 0.5 mg of iron in 100 g if we consume 1 uh, uh, kg of rice normally we consume 400 g of rice 350 to 400 g we might hardly get 2 to 3 ppm 2 to 3 mg of iron so out of that only hardly 5 to 10% is absorbed so that amount of iron is not sufficient to maintain our normal function so that is why iron although it is present in higher quantities in certain diets due to interference by other principles in the diet its absorption might be reduced so that is important to remember that uh, plant based diets are generally poor in providing iron compared to animal diets because in animal diets the heme iron is well absorbed compared to the plant based diet or for that matter even in organic iron so uh, in case of millets pearl millet is a very rich source of iron so it is so rich that the normal limits of iron itself is around 40 ppm in case of pearl millet it can go up to 120 ppm in case of certain varieties so pearl millet can be consumed as such usually so when it is made into flour and consumed we get most of the iron and the iron is also well absorbed or sufficiently absorbed to show that in case of a clinical trials in case of children in india especially it was shown that the consumption of iron biofortified pearl millet has improved the cognitive performance in case of school going children that means they are able to be more active able to participate in activities and are able to 
perform better on certain tests which require cognition so this clear cut indicates that including millets like pearl millet or any other millet for that matter is definitely improving our mineral absorption into the body so it is providing sufficient minerals for normal activities compared to monotonous diets if your diet is really diverse then there is no doubt that you will get all the nutrients then coming to calcium and vitamin d so this is uh, nowadays is becoming like a, a, a epidemic so many people are becoming uh, deficient in vitamin d3 and further complications of uh, osteoporosis or fractures or loss of bone density all these issues so vitamin d is required for calcium absorption in the intestine although we consume lot of calcium if sufficient vitamin d is not present it is not absorbed into the body however the best source of vitamin d for us is simple sunlight exposure which we are not able to get these days we can many times we try to blame uh, our uh, uh, what you call non communicable diseases on diet telling that the diet has really changed so much because of that we are getting all diseases not only diet our lifestyle even changed more than diet the way we were working in earlier generations the type of life people were leading the type of jobs people were doing so these also have changed so much that our both mental and social uh, well being is also having effect on our nutrition so in case of sunlight exposure we might think that if you expose for longer time there may be more vitamin d and toxicity which is not the case because the body is having only enough quantities in skin which when exposed to sunlight sunlight is converted into vitamin d and then absorbed into the body so without vitamin d calcium is not absorbed however if sufficient calcium is not there then also you will end up in lack of sufficient bone mineral density apart from vitamin d and calcium exercise is also important for mineralization of the bones that is why many people astronauts who go into space because there is not enough gravity they no, they need not do much work there is there is no uh, force against which they have to flex their muscles so in such situations they tend to lose bone density so that was very interesting finding uh, from people who are coming back from space and they found that exercising in space also maintains the bone mineral density so exercise a regular exercise is very important your bone structure will not change but the mineral density inside the bone will change which makes them more prone for fractures also the calcium deposition is also dependent on hormones of the body so we have to maintain a normal active life so that we are in a proper homeostasis and it is also important that we have enough bone density in young age so that the osteoporosis condition is delayed in old age it was found that uh, uh, young adults who were having good mineral density were having less issues with osteoporosis and fractures in the older age and it is now clear that vitamin d although we call it as vitamin it is very clear that vitamin d3 is a hormone in the body and it is having wide ranging functions not only in bone metabolism but also in immunity and maintaining the homeostasis of the body and so many other functions are being realized now and once it is realized that it is a hormone it will have a long lasting effects because a, an effect by a hormone will tend to have its effect for quite some time unlike a, like a vitamin if it is replacing it immediately you will see the effect but in case of hormone usually it takes some time and also the effect will take quite some time and in case of calcium our finger millet is the richest source and finger millet is also consumed as a whole grain usually it is consumed as a ragi ambali or mudda in such forms which are easy to digest and also well available for the body in fact finger millet is uh, uh, easily digestible along with that it is also having very good fiber content so indian diets are generally rich in carbohydrates refined carbohydrates and sugar raise our blood glucose level rapidly that means they increase our glucose concentration very fast and high fiber diets tend to 
have low glycemic index and hence they will have a control on the blood sugar levels so millets are also rich in dietary fiber and hence they will have a probiotic effect on gut microbiome that means you will have a healthy microflora inside the gastrointestinal tract which will help in proper maintenance of bowels and also it increases the satiety and hence you will consume less amount of food compared to normal people so this is uh, important to realize that the type of diet required for growing children and the type of diet required for adults for maintenance are different in case of growing children we should focus on giving more energy more protein along with other micronutrients but in case of adults it is important to provide only the micronutrients and to provide fiber sufficient fiber in the diet so that the sufficient amount of nutrients required for maintenance are only absorbed so if we consume more processed or refined diets in our adult life we tend to become obese and most of the millets are digested slowly and they have low glycemic index however if even if the millet is made into fine flour many uh, studies on uh, finger millet for diabetics it has shown that finger millet is quite quickly digested finger millet starch is absorbed into the blood so depending on how it is also prepared will influence your certain absorption parameters so uh, i was fortunate to review this uh, publication a systematic review of uh, many of the studies with millets for managing and reducing the risk of developing diabetes mellitus so these uh, meta analysis shows that definitely millets have a function of slow digestion in the intestinal tract and they have a low gi so that they will not increase the absorption of glucose very quickly so that those people who are already having diabetes can manage their blood sugar levels within normal ranges the problem with higher amount of glucose in blood is that uh, higher tissue availability is having side effects on many organs like our wound healing will be reduced kidneys will be affected peripheral nerves will be affected even it has a negative effect on heart health and cardiovascular diseases so that is why maintaining the blood glucose level within the normal range is of paramount importance for those who are having diabetes it is very surprising that our bodies utilize only glucose although we call it as blood sugar what circulates in our blood is glucose which is taken from the diet after breaking down the starch and this glucose within limits suppose if it is below 250 mg per deciliter it is not at all excreted in urine and is very well maintained so that means the body is having a very good mechanism for maintaining the constant level of glucose in the blood so diabetes is basically a metabolic disease which can only be maintained once you develop it because there are genetic predispositions and other fundamental causes for diabetes coming to the protein content and the protein quality in case of uh, millets and cereals per se protein is first broken down into amino acids and then only absorbed into the body so the protein in diet is not directly used by the body it is first broken down into its amino acids and then the body uses to build its own protein so out of 20 amino acids nine amino acids are essential in our diets and the protein quality is determined by the ratio of essential amino acids so this ratio if we compare pulses and cereals with animal diets we say animal proteins are already balanced in amino acids they are having a ideal ratio of amino acids because the muscle itself is the diet that we consume from animals like chicken meat which is mostly muscle or animal meats so the muscle itself is made up of major major portion of the muscle is actin and myosin proteins so they have a ideal composition which is similar to our muscle protein so that is why their ratio is well balanced however the ratio of amino acids in case of cereals so cereals are deficient in lysine and theanine amino acids however they are rich in methionine pulses are deficient in methionine and they are rich in lysine protein content of millets is okay in good proportion 8 to 12% then the amino acid profile of millets is also similar to other cereals hence 
it is always ideal to combine a cereal with a pulse so that is why uh, in northern india it is always called as dal roti in generally in the southern part it is uh, uh, only rice based diets and in rarely during marriages only we call it as pappannam what is what we call it as uh, dal rice so there is a disparity in the amount of consumption of pulses so it is always a good idea to combine a cereal with a pulse to balance the essential amino acids so it is not just that i am preaching the importance of millets but also that we regularly consume ragi roti along with a pulse so include a cereal always with a pulse so that you get a good protein quality for the body so after these important nutrients these are the well recognized nutrients where the deficiency diseases have been identified there is a well characterized uh, what you call uh, uh, evidence for consumption of these nutrients however coming to other micronutrients like phytochemicals which are present in very small quantities in different nutrients like vegetables fruits or colored grains in all these things so these phytochemicals are very diverse group of compounds with a very mixed functions so sometimes we call them as anti nutrients sometimes they are antioxidants depending on their quantities so if uh, phytic acid can be both an antioxidant if it in very high amounts will reduce uh, mineral absorption like this these phytochemicals are a part of uh, many of the plant based diets but there is no very clear evidence that they have these specific functions in the body however based upon the cell culture experiments and certain animal experiments the evidence is emerging that they are also having a good role to play in case of relieving oxidative stress or cardiovascular diseases or uh, uh, preventing cancer and other details but still sufficient evidence emerges on based on the true clinical trials we cannot say that uh, this particular type of uh, phytochemicals will uh, cure or prevent certain type of diseases however if you see at the millets uh, per se uh, generally they are rich in phytochemicals when they are consumed in whole grains like sorghum there are different varieties of uh, grains yellow yellow sorghum red sorghum and also white sorghum and then in case of uh, finger millet there is many literature that uh, in finger millet polyphenols which are present in the brown seed coat can help in preventing peptic ulcers in case of stomach but uh, the clear cut evidence is not yet uh, provided so these are the phytochemicals that we can get when we are consuming whole grain millets along with that and there are reports of certain anti nutrients which we should not leave out however uh, this is one study uh, done in africa about uh, pearl millet where a glycosyl vitexin present in the seed coat layer is is uh, found to induce uh, goiter in case of certain patients so this goiter is quite complex because uh, dietary availability of iodine is uh, limiting that is why uh, we are fortifying our salt table salt with iodine so that sufficient iodine is present in our diets and nowadays it is becoming uh, again a issue especially in case of people with hypertension where they were asked to restrict salt intake so that our iodine uh, intake is also going down and again uh, the lack of uh, iodine leads to increased in tsh thyrotropin uh, thyroid stimulating hormone and further uh, uh, decrease in thyroxines so decrease in thyroxine again is having a long term metabolic effects like obesity and other issues so it is important that we balance the diet well instead of completely removing we need to ensure that we get all nutrients in the diet however we are not sure whether uh, recently cultivated varieties and uh, other finger mill uh, pearl millet uh, grains are having sufficient quantities of vitexin to prevent uh, thyroid function because if you look at the structure of it uh, this is similar to the tyrosine moiety in case of uh, thyroxine so because of this similar uh, structure with thyroxine or tyrosine this will potentially bind to uh, myeloperoxidase which is involved in iodination of uh, thy thyroglobulin and uh, inducing goiter but uh, recently of course this these problems come when the diets are monotonous if you are consuming only one type of diet 
where there is a sufficient iodine is not available with such complications. And also it is important to understand that too much of fiber in diet will de reduce absorption of nutrients, especially in case of children who require more nutrients for growth and other functions. So these are different uh, varieties of sorghum with different colors and with different polyphenol contents uh, in them. And these are different products which can be prepared like your uh, flakes and uh, rice flakes or uh, corn flakes or your oat flakes, sorghum flakes, bajra flakes are also available in market. Even ragi flakes are also coming up. It can be used as a semolina uh, like our rava. It can be mixed with uh, uh, lagram dal. It can be fermented along with that and the idli and dosa can also be made with that. Because one advantage of uh, fermentation is that the fermentation adds a lot of vitamins, especially vitamins to the diet. So if we take uh, any of these vitamin deficiency diseases, most of them have appeared due to consumption of the flour directly. The deficiency never appeared due to bread, that is refined wheat flour bread, because the bread inherently is containing yeast fermented uh, uh, cooking methods. So fermentation adds uh, vitamins to the diet and uh, will help in supplementing that. And so whatever the products we can normally make with uh, like rice and wheat, to some extent can be made with most of the millets. Only disadvantage is that, uh, of course, it is both an advantage and disadvantage with millets. Uh, the flour, when it is made into a chapati or roti, it is difficult to make because there is no gluten, unlike wheat flour, which is having sufficient gluten. However, with a bit of skill and then uh, practicing it, we can very well make uh, rotis and other preparations with these millets. Uh, like uh, if you if you take uh, the senses of the humans, like taste, these are all adaptive. Once you, your taste is adapted to something, you prefer to take that. However, to change that, you need to give some time for the diet so that you slowly adapt to the new type of diet and your body also adapt to that. So our millets, sometimes they might, their taste may be slightly different if they are not uh, completely polished. But however, as you adapt to that, you start liking them. And also you will see, uh, based on the experiences, you will see better improvement in uh, glycemic control or lack of hunger for uh, uh, I mean, uh, snacks. Means uh, Once you eat a portion of millet in the morning, you can stay up to afternoon with full energy. So like that, there are certain advantages uh, for uh, using millets in our diets. So on our institute, uh, mail ID is here. Uh, uh, website address is here and then most of the details you can find about millets different products and their uh, health benefits and we also have a nutri hub and uh, incubation center where uh, farmers or students can visit and familiarize themselves with uh, different products that are available in the market which can be promoted and also different processing machineries because the main problem uh, for discarding millets initially was one thing was their low yields and second is difficulties in processing, especially the millets with husks. So these are small grains and difficult to process. However, with availability of machinery and then better processing methods, we they are becoming more available in the market. And uh, then we can add definitely millets to our diets so that they are more balanced and then we can realize our potential. So as I say, uh, a physical part of health of course, we are providing through nutrition. However, it is important that we also ma maintain our mental and social well-being so that we can maintain our health completely. So telling that only food alone will cure our disease is not the complete story. So we have to look at human being as a whole organism and then uh, manage or maintain our health. Thank you. So this completes my presentation. Uh, any uh, questions I can take. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to ask the participants if they have any questions. Sir, one question from my side. Uh, frequently, yes, uh, from my staff members also, they were uh, continuously asking me whether they can shift the diet completely to the millets, uh, leaving rice or wheat alone. Uh, 
just i was uh, sharing them that uh, that was the staple diet we can't move completely but uh, in this regard we require your opinion sir yes ma'am so uh, uh, any diet which becomes monotonous as i said is not good because based on the grain type there are different uh, nutrients although we realize that a group of nutrients are well studied there are some nutrients which we do not know whether they they are uh, essentially required so in such cases when you are adapting to a new diet new diet it is always good to go slow first then look for any changes that you observe and if you are fine with that you can shift to the diet however it is always a good idea to balance the diet so only cereal based diets will not give you all the nutrients so a cereal a pulse fruits vegetables so if this is the diversity in the diet definitely there is no uh, issue with including millets as a replacement for cereals however millets alone in the diet may not be a good option so it is always a diversified diet is a balanced diet yes sir thank you sir so we suggest to people to follow the diverse diets yes with different combinations instead of uh, completely shifting from our uh, staple diet to yes, the sir. one which is coming uh, in the social media each one they want they want to follow the their diet when it is coming in the social media yes ma'am so, there are many misleading things some people say that if you eat uh, some millet you will be like superhuman there won't be any diseases at all or cures from all diseases there is no such uh, what you call panacea type of diets so basically they provide the nutrients so and uh, nutrients are required for the body but they are alone not sufficient to maintain health so yes, just sir. eating a balanced diet and sitting will not definitely preserve our health so yes, we have to combine all the required things for the body yes, to achieve our to uh, preserve our health yes sir thank you so much for uh, giving such a wonderful presentation sir now i would request dr rk mathur director of icr iopr to give his remarks very good morning good morning sir very good healthy morning <laughs> it was a really very good talk thank you sir ji thank you very much Of course, certain things superficially we know, but he has really shown in depth what are the biochemical processes and how it affects. So that also we could get from your talk. Uh, of course, nowadays everybody talks of millets. Millets in, in present that actually we are from 50 plus population, so we have seen uh, what whether it was there in our diet or not. It was earlier there in our plate. it was there in our diet then uh, slowly i often discuss with my colleagues here of course dr prasad is smiling that it has gone from our diet since we developed after that again we realized that this is very essential component of the diet and we have brought it back only after seeing in supermarkets while maize has come uh, any products of maize have come corn products have come uh, in supermarket we realized that and now again we are purchasing at a very high price you can see 20 25 rupees we are paying for a single base scope which used to be readily available just like that in our villages so slowly we are going back probably this is the cycle of the development that what we say i remember my colleagues uh, uh, on the photo he has shown that uh, entire cycle of development is complete and we have come back where we start We started in the sense nutrition has become important now. Of course, this is all time uh, frame. It is there. Earlier, probably we have to go for more production and production to cater our needs to feed our population. That's why that time we couldn't go for this uh, nutrition aspects. Now, while we our uh, reserves are full of food grains, then again uh, we are thinking of the nutrition which has become very important now. probably the life style also has become like this uh, where you are all again telling at uh, or baba ramdev and other also will be telling that do some exercise do yoga pranayam which are part of our life earlier so again we are going back of course it is a good development that uh, we have become cautious about our diet and health 
and uh, giving time for yoga, pranayam, and exercises. But as you rightly told, no food is wholesome. Definitely, and that's why the concept of multigrain have come. We are seeing in the market now, multigrain atta is available, multigrain dalia is available. So those things that probably it makes a wholesome food, which uh, body requires uh, carbohydrate also we require protein, fat, fibers, all these things we require. And you are rightly told, I think uh, some of our colleagues also, they are totally on raggy diet or something like that. But that is not true. We have shown that uh, it may be affecting the absorption of nutrients also in body, which uh, again uh, develop some complications. So, if you talk of oil, definitely I have to talk palm oil. And uh, palm oil is also, of course, there are many school of thoughts. There are many social media messages are uh, circulated. But the fact is uh, that palm oil is also a source of uh, vitamin A and vitamin E. And if you look at our uh, uh, population below poverty line or around poverty line, they are really deficient in vitamin E, which is uh, very important in many physiological activities and growth. So this is the source for that. And uh, we have also seen British and aspect of palm oil. I want to take advantage of this forum to bring it to your knowledge of all others that palm oil is also not at all enhancing the cholesterol level. It is rather reported scientifically to reducing the cholesterol level. So there are different school of thoughts are there. We don't uh, fall in that trap, but definitely our uh, group also being an oil palm worker and uh, we also consume palm oil, but then palm oil alone should not be taken. So you have to take other oils also in your diet. That's why we started even physical blending, physical blending of one or two oils also. But at the same time, what we have been suggested, we can go for the one after other. Maybe two, this time we have taken palm oil, next sunflower oil, safflower oil. All oils are good. Definitely nothing is said. We cannot say that one oil is not good and other is not very good and all those things are there. So that is a wonderful talk I could see. and. Uh, as far as uh, you told, processing aspects in our uh, millets, that is really very important. I think our colleague, Dr. Sri Sankar, is sitting there here, and he has been to your millet institute, and you are going to develop some way of policy so that the very important aleron layer you don't miss. If that layer goes, then probably high quality amino acids goes from your food or that grain. So processing is very important, polishing is very important, how to polish in such a way that uh, nutrients are not lost. So that also becomes important in millets. I was working in soybean where uh, that uh, embryo is there on the top of, it is rotating outside of the seed and then it becomes very difficult uh, to go for, get a good germination and viability. So those things are inbuilt with that and uh, we have to see that uh, uh, the way in which we handle or tackle physically, that uh, has to be improved. So processing and these things are there. And uh, uh, looking at the present uh, diet, uh, of course, your slide number 27, I noted. <laughs> it was very good slide. But if you all virtual <laughs> snacks, we have seen. Of course, whenever we have visited Hyderabad, for your institute, you have shown many good products of millet-based products. And your institute has done wonderful work on that aspect. Especially processing and food items, many ragi-based uh, dosa and uh, then, uh, this idli and so many things I have tasted also. I got it from your institute. <laughs> but at the same time, uh, wheat is also required in the diet. Rice is also required in the diet. Maize is also required. And this pod millet especially say that some anti-nutritional factors are also there. So anti-nutritional factors are there even in soybean also and other crops also. And while you are going for the dry consumption of as a grain, probably what you have suggested is uh, sprouting is a better option. And that's why we are seeing in market also now uh, flour made of the sprouted grains. That is also packets are available. We don't want to do all these things in house. We have become lazy, probably. So we are purchasing ready-made from the market. 
but then sprouting is very important activity i think and uh, water sprout either as a sprouted grains you take or a sprout dry and then make flour and these things also become important and there this role of dietitians have come if you go to any hospital uh, but the pathwajas student also i have seen uh, they were there with me in society and they have become good dietitians in hospitals so role of dietitians have become important so that uh, different nutrients fibers are very important in diet many positive points are there but you saw too much fiber also not good so those things probably dietitians can guide us better and if you take on dietitian diet you may not able to relish the food but then probably taste and quality are inversely related the item which is tasty it may not have quality so that way it is there and you know millets are gluten free that is the plus point always it is there at the same time uh, soluble fibers i think uh, you were talking about water soluble fibers so that will be very good only so that our body can easily react and nowadays it has become a step i will not say step on food or step on diet but it has become very important component uh, in a, a population which is affected by uh, or which is suffering from diabetes so wherever diabetes diabetic patients are there our colleagues are also there they are going for ragi and this sort of millet based diets uh, of course i also tried uh, i don't suffer from uh, this uh, diabetes but at the same time i also tested but taste is less therefore you have to work more on that how to make it more tasty and while retaining the uh, uh, chemical or good proper nutritional properties of that so permillet was there i am from rajasthan permillet and this maize they were a staple food during winter time during winter season probably they give more energy at that time it is required due to low temperature so that were there they are now also there in our diet of course we consume during winters and uh, we assume that it is rich in iron so definitely for any people it is a very good source for iron and other diabetic things so sorghum we have seen of course in our textbook also in our subject also uh, prop right time of for uh, harvesting right time the stage of consumption also become very important other is sorghum sometimes it is toxic also for animals we have seen uh, scm uh, toxicity has been reported and if you say so i mean also definitely if it is dried then anti nutrients are factor will be of course that is heat labile so if you are heating that, that should uh, disintegrate it should not be there so all those things are there many things you have shown thank you very much for wonderful talk of course uh, we were think we were thinking to organize separately uh, dr manobha was uh, just uh, trying that in between uh, this uh, proposal came and then uh, san teresa is doing of course we are in amoy with san teresa college also so it is uh, thank you very much san teresa for involving us also collaborating with us also and thank you ventosology for guiding us so that we can have a healthy diet thank but you, your sir. slide 27 was very good Maybe yeah welcome, welcome to visit you. sir <laughs> well, thank you you are thank you thanks a lot thank you so much uh, director sir actually uh, you were insisting on 27 slide but when mm -hmm. sir was showing about the download so i was interested in the last one that is the millet recipe download and i downloaded okay. that also so that we can share with the public <laughs> Thank you so much for the, um, your remarks, sir. Okay. Dr. Now I would Prasad, like Dr. Prasad want to speak. Yeah. Don't don't ignore him. Unmute. Prasad, sir. Thank you, Dr. Vandeshwar ji, for giving a wonderful lecture on uh, balanced diet and leading as the. Uh, well being uh, individual health part 1 part 2 is uh, the relation between the brain and tongue to maintain our uh, dietary habits the point number 3 what i was interested in is uh, dr venkatesh uh, kutlakam uh, sayest you have a, a very good uh, nutrition nutritious diet we have vitamin a and e with us in pamai 
so how best we can uh, integrate these two and make a diet which is nutritionally good and as well as tasty and we can uh, show a policy way out for the government of india whether it is a children or adult or um, the diet provided in a patient diet in a, in hospitals how we can blend these two ideas now i would like to have your session and mr uh, shivashankar is there with us in the post service technology if this uh, talk can lead to a, a breakthrough uh, idea in the coming uh, days that will be a welcome uh, for both of our institutes thank you can you guide something towards this uh, sir uh, yeah it is a very good idea that uh, vitamin a and e are definitely becoming less in indian diets because many times uh, vitamin a is available from uh, colored fruits and vegetables which is not which is less generally consumed less in indian diets but uh, however uh, as the oil is generally used in most of our preparations so it should impart vitamin a and e to that however only part is when the oil is generally used for uh, what you call cooking when the temperature reaches 220 degrees or 230 and when it is uh, repeatedly done probably the amount will be getting degraded so if, uh, if we can make a product where the oil is directly added with minimal disruption to the vitamins so in that case we can say that these are vitamin a and e rich products which can be further uh, promoted so uh, suddenly i am not able to get any products or uh, these ideas uh, which we can implement per se but uh, i would be willing to uh, interact with uh, dr shivashankar so that uh, we can uh, see if something can be brought out where like uh, minimal processing so that the nutrients are available in particular diet thank you thank you thank you sir, thank you, sir. Now, now i would request uh, any remarks from the organizing committee Yeah. Yeah, my Good morning, all of you. Uh, Shankar, Shankar, Shankar. Dr. Madhurama, I want you to speak. Okay, sir. Sir, whether I am audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma'am. Low. Yeah, it was Low voice. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, only small query I wanted to know. Actually, keto diet it yes. is very popular nowadays. So, okay. where a lot of protein is recommended. Okay. Whether it disrupts that ratio between protein and uh, carbohydrates, fats, whether it is good for health? Uh, actually, uh, whether it is good or bad, every person will decide as he feels it, madam. But however, the keto diet is like actually a keto mechanism is an adaptive mechanism in the body. In normal uh, nutrient intake, there won't be much generation of ketone bodies. It is an adaptive mechanism in the body where when uh, sufficient carbohydrate is not available, the body will make uh, glucose from breaking down the protein or utilizing the available protein. So when, uh, when, the ketone, when the ketosis proceeds further, then it can be detrimental to the body. So these diets need to be very carefully balanced under supervision, first thing, because if we look at uh, diabetic ketosis, even diabetic people develop ketosis because their body is not able to utilize glucose. So in that case, we cannot say that the ketosis in the body is useful for the body. It is actually an adaptive mechanism before completely failing. Moreover, too much of protein, because when protein is more in the diet, it cannot be absorbed, it cannot be utilized by the body. The body utilizes only the required amount. The remaining amino acids are broken down and the urea, nitrogen is excreted as urea. And the remaining carbon skeletons are used for again making into either fat or glucose based on the requirement. So there are limits for protein intake. So beyond our requirement, there is no need. But if sufficient protein intake is there, you can reduce your carbohydrate intake. That is the main idea in that. And you need not consume too much of uh, uh, quantity of diet. So probably that is why it is being promoted. But we need not go up to the level of uh, ketosis development to manage this. You increase your protein content in the diet and uh, reduce the overall amount 
so that you can reduce your body weight ultimately the body weight increases because most of the carbohydrate or uh, excess of nutrient is converted into fat that is the main reason why the fat accumulation is happening the only problem with our bodies is that uh, uh, if we require glucose we cannot make glucose from fat if we consume both higher fat or protein it is converted into fat and stored in the body but fat cannot be converted back to glucose unlike in case of plants where the glyoxylate cycle will help in converting fat into glucose so because of this limitation we have to monitor the diet any of these uh, experimental diets in uh, too much excess can have detrimental effects so that is my uh, suggestion madam thank you thank you sir sir very good morning sir good morning sir very uh, it was an excellent presentation sir thank i am you. having one doubt actually uh, that on genie millet powder is available now do you have any idea sir genie genie millet powder Yes, yes. What is the nutritional content, and as compared to the like ragi or something powder, what it contains? Uh, this powder actually. Uh, no, I have not heard about that. It is a brand, Jenny. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I think G J W E N I, Jenny Millet powder. Something it is available in all. I think uh, now medical stores and other sales, other shops also. Oh. No, I have no idea about that. But uh, any preparation, if it is made from millets. definitely it's going to have the carbohydrates other uh, nutrients in that like protein and fat the gross nutrients but however uh, uh, we should have a realistic goal of our storage and uh, processing a balance of that if you want to store it for too long time definitely you are going to over polish it and then uh, going to lose certain nutrients and eating only that powder alone definitely is not going to balance our diets so we have to take a call in such a way that you can eat now and then maybe but not as a sole diet definitely so but uh, the product you said i have no idea exactly what it uh, is i will try to look in next time when i go to a medical store okay thank you sir rajendran sir yeah uh, i have one your presentation was very good excellent clear very nice presentation thank you sir and you shown lot of millets no a uh, lot of yes. many millets from uh, yes. so soldam ragi many unknown names also there and yes, we are yes. we are also uh, we are also seeing in the supermarket many packets they are keeping proso millet like that mm -hmm. many many are like that uh, sometimes we are not able to understand also so if you are suggesting for us as a common man if you are suggesting for us to take one or two millets uh, regularly which one is good uh <laughs> it's a tough question sir so however a practical sense it is important so generally when we choose uh, one thing it should be commonly available so that we can consume on regular basis maybe that is available in today's uh, shelf and tomorrow it won't be available many of the millets where production is less so that is the case as of now but however as we see uh, most commonly available ones are i think ragi is getting more available nowadays and foxtail millet is also getting more available so both foxtail millet can be cooked as simple rice like rice it can be cooked or upma uh, like our normal uh, uh, dalia preparations so that can be consumed regularly in the sense uh, with along with the other ones so we won't consume three times the same millet definitely so that can be consumed in one time and then your normal regular diets in the other time so uh, uh, because calcium is also good in case of uh, finger millet finger millet is a very good option to include at any time either as ragi java or as mudda or roti also so actually it is uh, very good to eat as roti because most of the base materials when we add uh, sufficient spices and uh, our masalas they will look tasty because the taste is not in the base material definitely so in that way we can i prefer finger millet and fox tail or the two candidates which we can regularly consume and if possible uh, uh, pearl millet is a very good candidate for iron especially in case of elderly and uh, those who are requirement of iron so pearl millet is basic basic level itself it is good in iron content compared to other millets so if that flower can be but the only issue with the uh, finger millet is that flower it spoils very fast within 3 to 5 days it will be bitter so the best option is to cook it as rice the earlier days we were cooking it as rice and eating that is the best option 
ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सर बट रवि यू डोंट रिक्वायर ऑल दिस थिंग्स इट इज फॉर यू नॉट फॉर यू इट इज फॉर यू थैंक यू तो नो कैन आई रिक्वेस्ट शिवशंकर जी टू गिव हिज रिमार्क्स Uh, morning all of the directors sir and uh, all other scientific faculty as you know we are celebrating uh, our entire nation is celebrating national nutritional week so as a part of this and under uh, azadi ka amrut mahotsav we are conducting this uh, webinar uh, first of all uh, on behalf of uh, organizing committee from iopr uh, we are sincerely thanks to uh, the management and all faculty members of uh, st desha college for women uh, thank you thank you madam uh, for involving us and uh, yes sir uh, dr venkateswar sir you are you, you undoubtedly you are enlightened us in following healthy diet uh, you have excellently covered the national uh, scenario of malnutrition and uh, how the micro and macronutrients are health uh, health beneficial this micro and macro nutrients and uh, what is the necessity for consuming uh, this millets uh, it, your presentation was excellent sir uh, yeah sir i had two doubts one doubt already asked by our madam padmaja madam uh, that uh, uh, yeah, as you suggested uh, in your slides uh, every day uh, we have to consume 400 grams of cereals yeah if you replace uh, that cereals uh, With only millets, how it will adversely affect that? Uh, already, we, Madam asked and uh, you also answered. Sir, I have another doubt. Uh, sir, uh, actually, these phytochemicals, uh, especially phenols, uh, I hope uh, they are presented in millets and they will. Whether I just I want to know whether it will act as uh, anti-nutritional or not. Yeah. So very good question, Dr. Shiv Shankar. The issue with this uh, phytochemicals since very long time is that. one thing they are uh, uh, very strong precipitants of proteins so that way they try to inhibit protein action in the digestion process like our digestive enzymes and use it to reduce absorption so it is very clear in uh, many of the growth studies that excessive tannins or other phytochemicals was reducing the weight gain but we have to see a balance where whether you want weight gain as a criteria or you want to manage the weight so depending on that i think we need to take a balanced approach in minimal quantities definitely may not be affecting the normal nutrition but excess quantities definitely will have negative effect on that but however uh, ex ex uh, ex except for tannins the other phytochemicals concentration is generally less and uh, we are not very clear about their effects also because only one trial as i was reading about nutrition was known that cabbage prevents uh, radiation injury so people uh, means animals fed with cabbage they were resistant to radiation exposure so it is well proven in clinical uh, means uh, experiment in animal experiment but uh, it took very long for us to identify the actual compound involved in uh, prevention of this radiation injury like that so maybe probably as the uh, field matures we might come to know that what quantities are better for nutrition and uh, what are the levels that can be consumed so that is my position uh, thank you sir thank you, thank you madam so to you madam thank you for uh, your active participation and finally to conclude i would request ms t jansi lakshmi lecturer in home science to propose vote of thanks So good morning to one and all present here. It is such an honor for me to have an opportunity to thank you all for all dignitaries on behalf on behalf of Saint Teresa's College, Home Science Department. I would like to express my gratitude to all esteemed delegates of the webinar for their presence and contribution to make the webinar a great successful. From the bottom of my heart. i would like to i would like to try to thank god almighty for his god almighty for his blessing 
So I extend my gratitude to our honorable resource person, Dr. R. Venkatesh Parlagaru, ICAR, Indian Institute of Millet Research, to take time from her from this busy schedule to grace the event. So thank you, sir, for inspiring and encouraging us to encouraging us with your words on this special day. So a special thank to the director of ICAR, Indian Institute of Alcom Research, for providing immense support to for the webinar successful. So I extend my gratitude to Dr. Sister Marietta Dimelo and principal and the management of CHSC St. Texas College and Dr. M. Padmaja, HOD of Homesets Department to organize this webinar even in this pandemic situation. So my heartfelt thanks go to the teaching fraternity of our college and scientists from ICAR, Indian Institute of Oil Research, Pradevegi, and all the participants for their presence in this webinar. So I must thank uh, organizing team, staff, students, and all the technicians for working hard from the past few days to make this event a great success. So thank you everyone once again to make this event a great success. So thank you. Thank you, Jansi. Finally, I would like to conclude. Stay healthy, eat healthy, and stay safe. And finally, we'll end the program with Janigan Mana. Punjab Singh Gujarat Maratha Kavira Pukkala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Kanda Uchala Jagati Karanda Tava Shubha Nami Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Mange Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagana Mangana Dayaka Jaya He Bhanaka Bhagya Vibhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Your personal guide to the world of Bhagya Thank you so much once again. I would thank like you, to thank you all for your active participation and I would like to thank the resource person once again, sir. In spite of your busy schedule, you would make it and make uh, made us all knowledgeable more. Being a nutritionist, I know something about this, but uh, you have touched even the biochemistry aspect of this middle list. Thank you very much, sir. And also a big thank you to all the scientists from the IOPR for your for participation and your extended cooperation thank you thank you one and all thank, thank you madam, madam for the opportunity thank you dr mathur for organizing this thank you sir thank you so much we'll end sir thank you okay.